Hello, it's Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder. And I'm Robin Clevett. Also from the Skill Builder. Yeah. And we're in the pub. We got comments to say, why have you compared that one to that one? That one's cheap, that one's expensive, that one's battery, that one's corded, and so on. So the idea is, look, if we ran two identical track saws, uh, the same wattage up against each other, quite honestly, you might get a couple more cuts out of one than the other. It might go two seconds faster. It's not really going to make you decide on a particular model. The value of these videos to us are your comments underneath. And I'm not just saying that, I really believe that there's the resource. You're the people who have tried the tools, you're the people who have got the experience of the brand, you're the people who have had the, the bad experiences. So the more you tell us, the more we can tell you, if you like. This is really, we make the videos and then they're just a, a, a forum for discussion, really, to, to get your experience out there, so it's very, very important that you keep those comments coming. We've and also, we try to do the format of these videos. What we want to do is we want to imagine that we've gone out, we've got the saw, we've bought the saw, and we've opened it up, we've got it out of the box. We're not, we're not going to generally study it for hours. We're going to get it out of the box. We know how a rail saw works. We know how to use a saw safely, obviously. Yeah. And also, this is exactly the experience that you guys are going to have. It's a bit like getting a new car. You don't really get the best out of it until you've had it for a year. No, no, it's true. And also, Elon Musk said that any any product that needs an instruction booklet is broken. That's his thing. You know, I don't necessarily agree with that. Robin and I have both selected the tools which we think are the best ones that have won. So, but we'll start with talking about what your same first of all so the Maffel we're going to start with the Maffel now interestingly it got one of the lowest numbers of views of all the track saws but one so why aren't people watching the Maffel one they tend to watch the other ones a lot more and I reckon it's probably because a lot of people don't know about Maffel they yeah. don't understand the brand they yeah. don't really know much about it they don't see it especially in America they don't see it so there you go so DP Joinery he wants to know where he can place a bet that the Maffel will be the winner. Well, any of those, Betfair, Joe Coral, will take your bet, and it's going to be coming up at the end of this DP joinery, so just keep watching and you'll find out whether your bet, you put your money on the Maffel, whether that turns out to be the winner. And there's a comment from KS, that's all we know you as, is KS, and bought a saw after seeing the review. And he also goes on to say um, it's the most expensive power tool he's ever bought but he doesn't regret it for a second. And I think that's probably a good point there yeah. about the brand, all right, guys? I think it's a big investment. But from KS's point of view, he says it's the best tool he's ever bought. So Jelly, he sent us in an email, actually, and his comment was that he wanted a plug-it connector, which is the connector you get with a Festool, but he wanted the Maffel, and they don't do a plug-it connector. So he got some epoxy resin and other things, and he made by casting off a plug-it connector. He's made his own plug-it connector, and here it is. He sent us a picture in just to prove that it works. So that's pretty a genius. That's, yeah, pretty good, isn't it? Uh, it jelly, he could have used a 3D printer, you know? So Alex goes on to say that he thinks the Cuprex, Cuprex motor is a bullshit marketing ploy. Really? He what, does. On... He reckons that a 1400 watt motor is plenty big enough to power even a slightly bigger saw, especially with the blade of the size yeah, diameter it yeah. is. Yeah, so. you, you, you could have a point. John Mackey, he says that these saws look really awkward for a right-handed person. Now, he wasn't the only person to comment on this. It's people saying, you look like you're using it cack-handed, you're doing it the wrong way around. Now, in my defense, there was even one saw where I was kneeling on top of the trestles doing it, and that got a few laughs, and guys that do that on our site, you get laughed off. Now, one of the reasons I did that was because I wanted to use it two-handed, so it was impossible to do, but the other thing is, when you're filming, if you get in the way of the camera, the camera can't see it. So the cameraman's shouting, stay out of the way, yeah. stay out of the way. So we're trying to use it at what you might consider to be an awkward position. I, th I think he's got a point that actually the way they're built, the motor should be on the other side, but uh, I was trying to figure this out with the track and everything else. It's a really interesting topic because um, one of my right-hand boys um, is left-handed. <laughs> and I'm right-handed, and so there are certain jobs that he's much, much better off doing than I'm what better off doing. Well, for example, um, when we're fixing kitchen, kitchen cabinets up and that sort of stuff, you know, if there's, there's a particular fixing, I'll give it to him. He can go, he can go with the right hand with the drill. You know, what if it's his day off. If it's day off, then I'll manage. And obviously, we can't read out all the comments for everyone, but NJP he says he's really glad I bought this saw. I saw the review, bought the saw, no regrets at all. So there you go. That's lovely. Nice one. So we've got the Makita, the cordless. 
is similar, so yeah. we're going to deal with those two two in one go. Chris Grachomsky, mm. he says that the anti-tilt device on the Makita that stops it tipping off the yeah. track when you're doing a bevel, he said surely that could also be used as an anti-kickback. Now, I thought about this, and although he's got a point, I think that one of the problems with the anti-kickback is that when that sword does kick back, if it, if it does start to lift out of the cut, it actually lifts the track up as well. It, the whole bloody thing comes up, and, and, and that's where it marks your bit of work or whatever. Yeah, the best thing you can do is, if it kicks back, is just take your hands away, because that will mean the blade will spring up, and it will minimise the damage. Quite like Chris's comment though, in the, in the sense that if you're going to use that little sort of lever there, yeah. it could be quite easily engineered into both, into both jobs. Oh, okay, I off, see what you're saying. Off on an anti-kickback. So yeah, 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 yeah. quite like so it. So modif modified. Yeah, quite yeah, like yeah. where he's coming yeah, from. Yeah. Yeah. Peter, he's uh, comments on the choice of batteries, okay. Um, he reckons it opens up a can of worms. Does a six amp power give you more power than the three amp power. Okay, yeah. I would say it gives you longer power, Yeah. but the output of that power is designed to be, whether it's a one, two, three, four, five amp power, it's, it's the runtime. that's how I see it. Well, that's what they're telling us. Now, this right. is interesting because I've had a lot of conversations about this since people started saying, you're using the wrong size battery, and then I spoke to everybody. I spoke to Hilti, I spoke to Bosch, I spoke to Milwaukee, and they all kind of, they went, well, no, it shouldn't really make any difference. But then I started to get through that yeah. chink of armour, if you like, and, and they started to confess that it does actually make a difference on certain tools. Right. And that's the interesting thing, is it's certain tools, but we get so many people who put the comments in and say, it definitely makes a difference. I've tried it. It does produce more power. So, so at what point do manufacturers fess up to this and say that if you buy a 6 amp power battery not only will you get more run time but you'll get more grunt out of it and they're not saying that at the moment really then no, there's nobody out there who's actually confessing that in, in their literature as an official line but i think it's true i think but but how much more power mm. you know so so yeah okay so I understand what you're saying that I tested this Makita uh, cordless with a 3 amp hour battery and a lot of people said you shouldn't do that because it was gutless it was horrible but what I'm saying is okay so to a certain extent it's Makita's fault they sent the naked body tool yeah so if they sent me a couple of batteries they sent some batteries with some other tools but they weren't there so I've got to go root around to find the batteries the wall interestingly with their 54 volt Send the tool, send the batteries, no problem. Brand new tool, brand new batteries. That's what we're going to test. So, in a way, we test what we're sent, and, and that's the problem, really. Yeah. Geordie goes on to say the track's not square. Well, he's joining them together. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting point because later, as you might see, you know, no, you, you, you would have seen if you've seen it, but we had this problem with another one, didn't we? With a Triton, mm. which was a late contender, if you like. Well, we put that together and Robin spent quite a lot of time mucking about with that track to try and get it to run smoother. But it was a mission, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a mission. It was, the tolerances, there was too much tolerance in it. You know, it was, it was quite easy to just tighten it up and it just wasn't... But... So what we took, so are we saying that the tracks, when they're cut, aren't cut square? I think that's what he's saying. I think that's what he's saying. He's relying on putting them together, tightening them up. I think it was always good practice, guys. Anyone who knows, if you've got, if you, if you're ripping down MDF, you can always use the edge of the board before you cut into it as a straight edge. Oh, okay. Tighten yeah, it yeah. up to that. It's an eight foot long length. But I don't like joining tracks. If I can no. help it, I'd rather not join tracks. Yeah, actually. most of the chippies I know, the first thing they do is they go out and get the 2.7 meter long rail. Yeah. So yeah. you can take, you can tackle the 2.4. Geordie, thanks so much for sending in the email pictures and all the rest of it. It's really, really good feedback because we have got a hotline to the manufacturers. So it's really important for you to send these pictures in, send the comments in, and we'll do our best to try and table them for you because we know how hard it is to communicate through your merchants to the manufacturers. Mm. So nice. Yeah, good point. Yeah, we've got the ear of a few of them, not all of them. Some of them cock a deaf when we talk about these things. But certainly, we're faced with a situation now. Do we get a track? put it through a saw with an aluminium blade and cut it absolutely square. You'd think the manufacturers would be doing that. So I don't know whether there's a connection between marketing budget and the number of views. It'd be interesting to see because the wall up into the States, when I was in, I flew into LA, drove down to Las Vegas, and on my way down, I passed a convoy of DeWalt trucks. Mm. And I'm not joking you, this convoy, it was huge. They had a powerboat, like a massive powerboat, 
all didn't do all colour, yeah, yeah, yeah. it, was, it was impressive, you know, I mean, it was, a, I do like the fact that the brand crosses all the trades, I've got bricklayers who've got DeWalt gear, I've got plumbers with DeWalt gear, Sparkies with DeWalt gear, and I think it's because they feel comfortable with it. One of the things I said, this parallel plunge, that it comes straight down, and then people disputed that, so when you watch it, it tends to pivot forward, but I think what it does do is it stops the kickback to a certain extent. Yeah, it comes down. Yeah. So anyone who's familiar with you using a track saw, and if you're doing a plunge cut, for example, um, you've got to run it up, and you've got to really go nice and steady as you're going, because it can actually catch, and it can sort of spin you out of the way. And I do think with the parallel plunge, because it's Roger's right, it's parallel. It's not parallel straight down like that. It's slightly off centre. Yeah, no, it's coming down. That and way. you're at, yeah, and you're actually running into the material yeah. with all of your weight evenly pushing it back down, as opposed to doing this in an arc. And we'll just say one thing. There were people that were disappointed that we didn't try the corded, uh, corded DeWalt as well. Mm. It's just this flex vault cordless we tried. They are making an adapter now to change their 54 that you can plug into the main. So I think that's really going to be the, yeah. the future. But the other thing that people pointed out, OK, you've got this cordless tool, you're going around with it, but if you've got to use dust extraction, what are you going to do about dust extraction? You're going to cordless dust extraction? That's another load of batteries, another load of stuff. And then you've got to get the tool to talk to the dust extractor. Now, you can do that with Bluetooth, but check it out. Check out the cost of putting yourself a dust extractor onto a cordless track saw and Bluetooth them up because you're going to kiss goodbye to a thousand pounds. One, two, double, five, XL, what a name. He says that Roger tends to be more critical when he's working with Robin than when he's working on his own. So I did one of these on my own because you weren't around. Yeah. I said, I gave it, and this was the DeWalt, I gave it a, a free ride, I gave it a clean bill of health. And um, quite honestly, I was impressed by it as a machine, I've got to say that, I was impressed. Yeah. But I think one of the things is that I know Robin, he's a nice guy, everyone says it. They're all saying, oh. And, and I, I try to bring out, a, I try to get him to be a bit more critical, really, so that I'm playing devil's advocate really in that way because sometimes I think you're a bit forgiving to these people and the manufacturers and I'm going stick the boot in Robin stick yeah, the boot in I mean as just just me by nature I'm just not good at sticking the boot in right so Steve Bentman he says by the way you can use that DeWalt on the Festool track mm. and, and actually he's right failed to see that but actually there's all these extra grooves in it I thought being thick I thought what are these extra grooves for I didn't even think about getting it on the Festool track and trying it so that's great it means that you can use any of these tools with other tracks which is which is great first of all alan wilson home he alan wilson home is actually one of our regular commenters a regular viewer subscriber and uh, he sent some great comments in and he says yeah oh, this i like i like alan i like alan because well, he likes you yeah because he, he says agree with you. he says i agree with roger he said that first of all is underpowered he said robin are we talking about the corded one here Hmm. What's what the we next got, one, mate? Well, we got David Brent. Oh, I, don't yeah. know, I don't know if it's the David Brent. If so, so well, welcome to the Skill Builder family. <laughs> anyway, this guy says he sold his festival and he's TS bought 55. himself. Yeah, his TS55. He's bought himself a Makita because it's more powerful. I would say from using both, the Makita certainly feels quite powerful and it, it, it drives brilliantly, it runs brilliantly. It's 1300 um, watts, the Makita. Yeah, the well, Festool's 12. 1200, yeah, so it's obviously and, more powerful. And the MFL's 14. 14 yeah. Set the record straight. I went and got some brand new Festool batteries, ran it through, and it was fine. The interesting point there is that if you've got some old Festool batteries and you think you're gonna go buy that naked body and run that tool on those old batteries, watch out because it needs good batteries. Kevin Steer says he thought it was a little odd that we were comparing the corded and the cordless. I want to look at cordless, I want to look at corded, I want to know what the difference is, which one runs are corded, cordless as good as corded. That to me is the information and that to me is where our reviews should be going. Yep. Now the Bosch, I was really interested in this saw. I loved the look of it. I started using it and messing around with it and turning it around, having a good look at it. And I noticed that the base of it was clearly twisted. I could see it was just was not straight. Steve Bentman, he went to a show, Steve Bentman, that's no pun there on the twisted base, but he went to a tour show and he went over to the Bosch and he thought, I'll have a look at this. 
And you know what? He found exactly the same problem. Did that, he? that tool on the stand that they had as a demo model, yeah. he had a look at it and he said, Wonky Donkey. Wonky Donkey. That's his name, Wonky Donkeys, that's his term. So, so spot them. If you go into the power so tool shops, have a look. So Tom Bishop, he says, his general observation about Bosch is that they're in decline. And he said, I'm changing over. He said, as my Bosch stuff wears out, I'm changing over to other brands. Doesn't tell us what brands he's changing over to, but he's definitely leaving Bosch behind. So I think Bosch have got, they, they need to look at this problem, sort it out. Yeah, there's another comment by a guy called Major Rascal, and he's actually said the same thing. Yeah. He says he's gone off Bosch, um, and he says it's got poor durability. So, um, you know, there may be something in this, and it might be time to, you know, have a little look at what the end users are saying. And, get out yeah. there and make some changes. So great shame because other than that, other than the twisted base, and okay, so if you go and buy a Bosch saw, a good buy, I'd say, I'd say it's as good as the Mafel, except it doesn't have quite as many features, but it's a good sort of buy. So we come to Urbauer. Mm. What we got here is a cheap saw from Screwfix with a good warranty, 1400 watt motor, mm. fairly powerful. The only thing that drove me absolutely nuts with it was that anti-kickback little device on the back that stopped you moving it up and down and I fully understand why people think an anti-kickback is a good idea but to me it's almost a hazard in itself because you couldn't really you've, got to, you've got to respect her about you've got to respect B&Q's group it's and the rest of it you know because they do get a massive crossover of trade and of DIY so what you're going to find is they need to have these safety devices because the last thing you want is a lawsuit Someone saying, you know, I bought this, the first thing I did, put it in, it's cut my fingers off. So I would say, from a legal point of view, that's the right way to go for him. So Badger, he says that he used to have the Urbal, but he moved on to the TS-55. Yeah? Decoy, he said he took that anti-kickback off, and it is only one screw to take it off. And then you've got Mission Dan, who just comes straight out of it. Urbal is for DIY. So that's just a brief roundup of some of the views. There were lots more. You can read all those underneath the comments, underneath the various tools as we tested them. But it was a good, good flavour of what what you thought. So now let's have a look at what we thought.